welcome to my channel. Today's video is about how to fakie stall on roller skate. This tutorial will be a little different than other tutorials you may have watched on fakie stalls, not because I'm a special expert or anything. Literally, I just learned these like less than a month ago. I'm already doing other fakie tricks. I definitely think that it's going to be different than other videos though that you've watched because there's a tip in here that I've never heard before. I am pretty confident that what I'm gonna share in this video to help you learn fakie stalls is actually going to help you. Different things work for different people. It's not that one thing is the only way. There can be multiple ways to learn a trick and it's really actually an important trick to learn because that is how you can keep your momentum going. So if you are interested in learning how to fakie stall, we're gonna get right into it. I'm gonna give you my secret tip that helped this trick really unlock for me, help me get past my fear and overcome that challenge of how do I get both feet locked on the coping and a fakie stall. You can learn fakie stalls, you can get this trick. I hope that something clicks for you in this video. All right, let's get into the tutorial. And as always, safety is sexy guys. All right, let's take it to the ramps. We're going to begin by warming up on two transitions that are the same size. We're gonna just get a feel for the ramp, pump back and forth, get to know the transition, and get to know how it feels. We're just back and forth, pumping the ramp. Then you're gonna get up on the deck, drop in, late stall, and then you're gonna ride back fake. Now, when you do this, make sure that you do not drag your toe stop, no slowing it down, no toe stop, no, no. Remember to stay in your skater stand and just continue to ride the ramp up and then pump back down and then pump back up and just keep pumping back and forth until you get comfortable with that. You should be able to ride up all the way and then when you return fakie, get at least one foot on the coping. So once you're getting like one foot on the coping, you know that you're ready for the next step. Go watch this tutorial that I teach you a pivot drop in, which is actually going to be really useful to know because if you drop in using a different method other than stepping in the coping, you may want to just go watch that at least to get an idea of what you need to do for that because we're going to take it a step further. <laughs> this is what actually helped unlock it for me. So that's all I'm sharing right now with you is literally what helped me get fakie stall. So uh, Kyle was standing up on the deck with me and I was going to drop in. And he suggested that when I drop in, instead of just putting my foot straight into transition, he said, why don't you set it on the coping next to your other foot that's on as the second step and then let yourself roll in. So essentially it was like, when you set both feet on the coping, your weight is just gonna take you down the transition. You don't even have to do anything. Like there's no stepping, there's no jumping, there's no anything. You literally just, you will go down the transition. A pivot drop in, but instead of pivoting, you just kind of like set your foot next to the other foot on the coping and let yourself roll in and roll down the transition. Like I'm literally just gonna plate stall and come back and do the same thing. Like I'm just returning to my drop in position basically. The uncertainty that you feel when you're trying a new trick and you don't know how it's gonna go, you don't know how it's gonna feel, can be scary when you're trying a trick you've never gotten before. I get it, it can be very mental. This took away my fear because after I did this little trick, it was like, oh, that's what they'll feel like. That's what I'm aiming for. I know now. So yeah, you can add that little trick to your drop-in if it helps you mentally and physically unlock this trick and help you understand it better. I know for sure that it worked for me. And now we're gonna add the exact steps to fakie stall. As you ride back up fakie from your plate stall, right before you get to the transition behind you, you're going to look, pump, lift, and sit. It really helped me to repeat it actually aloud to myself and just say, Let's go Basically like I'm coaching myself what to do while I'm doing it. So as you ride up the transition fakie, if you want to say aloud these steps and repeat them to yourself loud or in your head, it actually helped me. So why not give it a go? You're going to look, pump, lift, and sit. And now I'm going to break down each one of those steps for you. Step one, look. So you're going to look behind you 
as you start going up the transition fakie. Looking helps you see exactly what is coming up and when, where your skates are, and helps you aim as you ride up to the coping. Looking takes away the scary part of not knowing what's behind you and not knowing what's going to happen when your skates get close to the coping. Look and aim at the coping behind you so that your feet will come up to the coping at the same time. You can look for it again once both your feet land on the coping. So another tip that helped me was I ignored traditional advice about which shoulder you should look over when you're going up the transition fakie. Everyone always said, look over your open hip, which is your foot that is back further because that side of your body is more open. And if you were to do like a rotation, instead of just like looking at the coping to try fakie stall, you would be able to actually complete that rotation better because it's just easier to turn towards your open hip rather than the leg that's sticking out in front because that kind of like gets in the way of turning. So you wanna to turn towards your open hip. But for me, I wasn't having any trouble getting my back foot up on the coping. I was having trouble getting my other foot still in the transition up to the coping at the same time as that foot. This one's always behind. I wasn't able to see it if I was looking over this shoulder. So I switched and I looked over my lead foot shoulder so I could bring my lead foot up in the transition back behind me to meet my other foot that was already there. So I still agree with the traditional advice. If you want a 180 fakie or you want to win a half cap or a 360, you should turn towards the side that your body is most open to. Also, I will say I only use this trick to help me get my foot up to the coping with my other foot at the same time. It helped me aim, it helped me see, it helped me get the timing right. I did that until I could get the timing by feel and I didn't even need to look behind me. So this really looking and aiming and trying to get that dragging foot up to the coping next to your other foot, which should be already hitting it and landing on it. It's just to help you learn how to do that. That's what worked for me. It was just a trick that will help you get that foot that's dragging behind. Now that we've covered how to look and aim, step two is pump. <laughs> Assembly is just squatting down. As you come up fakie and you're looking over your shoulder at the coping behind you and you're aiming your skates, you are going to need to pump. Fakie stalling is literally reverse a front side stall. Literally it's the exact same process. So just like you would pump as you come up to stall, you're gonna pump so you can come up to stall fake. Pumping at the right time gets you high enough so you can go all the way up and stall on top the coping. Pumping is part of the rhythm of stalling back and forth between two transitions on the coping and pumping is going to keep you going and you need to be able to know and trust yourself that you can control this momentum and land it in a stall and you can. So yeah, it's really amazing how fakie stalls are literally just the reverse of a front side plate stall. The only difference is the added challenge of going backwards into it. Step three, lift. The pump will give you a little boost to ride up onto the coping. As both feet come up to land on the coping, lift your heel, which is your back trucks, to lift over the coping. At first you may be tempted to just like let them roll over, but different copings stick out and it's really important to lift your heels. At that right moment, after you get that momentum from the pump, that lets you get on top of the coping. Because to really land a stall, you need to lift your heels and get on top of the coping. Some copings jut out really far from the transition and the deck. That's what makes it nice to stall in. But you gotta lift your heels to get over it and not run into it. As you come to the coping, you're gonna lift your heels at the last moment so you can lock on top of it into a fakie stall. You are so close to having fakie stalls if you have reached this point. I got another tip for you. This is like tip number four. If this tutorial was helping you in any way, please give it a big like and let me know. One trick that I found helpful is to experiment with the width that your feet need to be apart from each other while you're trying this trick. I found for me that if my base is too narrow, meaning I'm stalling with both feet pretty close together and more towards the center than further apart, fakie stalls are harder for me. My stance is a lot wider. I can actually hold that stall like pretty well. And I don't know if that goes into some theory about squats and how it's easier to do it with a wider base. Fitness gurus, let me know below. 
Don't be afraid to try getting your feet more of like a shoulder width apart and a little wider stance. because That's really gonna help you set your weight. For me, a wider stance works. Maybe you're shorter, maybe something else works for you. But for me, I feel like fake these stalls are easier and I'm stall stronger. And I feel like I have a better, more stable base when I'm stalling a little wider. And that's just something you can experiment yourself and find what works for you. You're really close to getting fakie stalls. The very last step is to sit into the stall. Practice by bringing it all together by sitting into it. Sitting kind of pushes your hips back and brings the rest of your body up over on the coping to rest into a full stall that you can hold. Mentally as you sit, just think about being back further on the deck with your butt. You really hold a stall by having your hips over your feet on the coping. You squat to sit into a stall. You don't have to sit low, find what's comfortable for you. The squat basically takes your momentum back further so your hips and your shoulders are over your feet in a true full stall. And now you've got it. Congratulations, you just fake the stall. I would say that practice makes perfect. As you keep practicing, you're going to feel more comfortable and confident and it's gonna come to you. But you can work up to that. You will feel yourself getting this rhythm, pumping back and forth. You eventually won't even need to pay as much attention to the exact steps that you need to do. You'll be able to just focus on sitting into them and holding them and making your stall stronger. You will get there, but that only comes with practice and repeating it and doing over and over. So just keep that in mind and don't be discouraged. Progress is progress. Just take it step by step. To review the steps just one more time, to fakie stall, remember that you need to look, pump, lift, and sit. If there's anything else I can help you with, just let me know in the comments below. I will read that and respond to you. Thank you so much for being here. Happy skiing, stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you next time. Bye. You can turn around. I'm in slaves.